Today, Warrior Games travels between Six Nations territory in southern Ontario and Canada's north in search of the elusive snow snake. It's a game shared by both Six Nations and the Dene Nation. This great winter game was used for not only exercise and entertainment, but in some cases, a way to feed your family. My name is Steve Sweetholt, and I'm from the Penalica tribe. I graduated high school at 19. I went back to school to become a journalist at 40. And now I tell stories, stories of warriors. Today on Warrior Games, we'll meet a snake that comes alive in the snow. And let me tell you, this Coast Salish guy, I'm great with animals. Ask anyone. No, really. It's true. It's a distance event. You try and grab around roughly the middle of the spear, so balancing it where it balances. Underhand, throwing it from your hip straight down at the ground, and it should slide as far as you can go. Basically, you're just trying to get it to go as far down the track as you can. There's all a bunch of different styles towards it. We do the center, try to find the center, and then you all like we're skipping rocks. Can't go above your hip, but as long as it's low your hip, like lower to the ground is the better. Elias and Jonah have been throwing snow snakes for years. They managed to wrangle up a bunch of local kids and with their expert guidance, had them throwing like pros. There you go, good one. And I think I'm getting the hang of it too but as usual, with a little more difficulty. Have you seen my snow snake? Have you seen it? Many of the sports we featured on this show are about honing the skills of a warrior. But with snow snake, it's about making a difficult and probably boring task a little bit more exciting. Collecting wood was a basic chore for the Iroquois members of the Six Nations. And that is the inspiration for the sport that continues to this day. Well, this one is what you call our snow snake bag where we carry our... And no one knows more about these snakes than Floyd Harris. Floyd, you obviously know a lot about this. Uh, you seem to be an authority in reference to putting this stuff together. How long have you been doing this? Well, all my life, pretty well. Well, I had to make my own eventually when I was a kid. I think it was 14 or 15. So I went out and got the wood I needed, and after a while, I had them all fixed up and ready for me to play. Well, my old man, he didn't really know how far it went back either, but all, all he said, uh, they started playing the snow snake a while back. That could be maybe in eight, late 1800, maybe even further back. I, nobody really, See how far it went back. The young people grew up, they start, we start playing snow snake.
Good toss. Well, this is where I started to make my snakes. I got some poles drying up there, and when I'm ready, I uh, bring one down and start forming with this axe. Well, that's what you call ironwood, eh? That wood there, you can put in a, a swamp or a water, soak it, then bring it out, let it air dry. I'm really curious about this uh, contraption here. Like summertime, if some guy wants to come here and practice on throwing the snakes, yeah. and he runs about 10 feet from that way and runs at it and throws it in there. Wow. When I get into the mode, I, I start making snow snakes. These are the short snakes, eh? OK. But you have two different types, though. Well, the long ones is they have classes. OK. They have the uh, first class. Mm -hmm. Different divisions yeah. of, of uh, snow snake. Yeah, okay. if you're just learning, you'd be in fourth class, eh? OK. Do you yeah. think that's where I would be? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So we have to see if you can hit that track. Maybe you'll be thrown. You'll miss the track all the time. It's unlikely. Yeah. Our friend at Six Nations had a wonderful and ingenious little setup there with his contraption, and we're trying to throw and, and make it go along the grass end or this little contraption he had. But it, nothing compares to having fresh snow and have it go straight. We're in Six Nations territory looking for snakes. Not the ones that hide in the grass, but fly across the snow. These long wooden projectiles were originally made exclusively by men, and the game played only by men. But like many traditions, they evolve. Okay, Floyd, we've got an array of snow snakes here and uh, beautiful works by the looks of things. Some of these snakes are, are obviously used for different conditions, and that's why you have so many, yep. Yeah. See, maybe this one here. It could be for fresh snow, these poor snakes. Fresh powder. Yeah. And you're pretty much holding it like this, right? Well, if it's heavy, you can, but it kind of throws you off if you can control it yeah. the whole length. Yeah, I can see that. You could have power right here. Uh, right. Hold that up, eh? Right. You felt that muscle there. It's pretty solid, eh? When it's winter time, you, you're a shiner, like I'm going to be your shiner. OK. He brought his snakes down like this, get it ready, and they go like this. They rub their rub snake. It down. It's much like when you're preparing to go skiing, you'd rub down your skis or wax your skis kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, similar, yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. And now I show, I'll show you how to throw it. Will you? Yes. OK. Everybody clear back. <laughs> this could be dangerous. OK. You're ready to rock. It's almost like a sidearm. That thing went a long ways. I'm a little surprised. It's quite a little run you have to get at it, too. I thought, honestly, it was just like you were tossing something. But apparently, I was mistaken. I'm a little leery now. There you go. Thank you for shining for me, sir. Sir, you're welcome. This is very exciting. Natural Coast Salish warrior, come eastbound. I'm not hunting, though. I missed it. Sorry. OK, I'm focused this time. You can see the intensity in my eye. I'm ready. Yeah, that's good. There you go. Good Is that OK? Sure. So if I did throw it, like hypothetically, and this was snow, how far can this thing go? Well, uh, it depends on the condition of the snow and the time of year, eh? Yeah cold, fresh snow you have, so they'll go a couple hundred yards, maybe more, depending. Wow. Now that we have the carefully crafted snow snake, guess what we need? Snow! So, we're on our way to find some snow. Not just any snow, but a long, fast track of it, so we can let these snow snakes fly. these six pooches out, 
And uh, it was fantastic. We're going along a frozen river. They pulled me along, and it was amazing. Uh, they knew the trail. They knew commands. It was beautiful out, crisp, clean air. What a wonderful experience. For the Iroquois, the snow snake was used for winter entertainment. But for the Dene, it was much more serious. The sport was used to teach hunters how to spear big game. Are you guys ready? Ready, ready Steve. Steve. <laughs> Can you see them? I can't see them. <laughs> Elias and Jonah, we've got a blanket. We've got some snow snakes. What are we doing here? So basically, we're going right into the actual Denny game sport called basically snow snake, or actually, we're gonna simulate hunting. We're gonna have a sheet. What they used to do is they'd have a nice white sheet. Basically, you're sitting on a lake or the ocean. You have a sheet in front of you. The hunters are all behind the sheet, so you're moving forward. They can't see because it's a white sheet. Everything behind is white. Basically, you're pretty much invisible on the ice. So camouflage. Yeah, camouflage. The actual snow snakes would have a nice long spear point on the tip here. And usually there's snow on the ice too, so when you whip it, the snow snake down the ice, the seal never sees it coming. So it's all underneath the snow. It goes through the seal, usually along the side. Hit him through the side, that way he can't go down the hole. And they come up afterwards and bonk him on the head. Ready to give it a shot? Jonas, ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, buddy, let's do it. We grew up, uh, you know, uh, eating the, the fruits of the forest, such as deer and, and uh, you know, other wild game. Unfortunately, I never got to participate in that. But uh, I, I think that uh, having uh, the ability to get out there and, and use a snow snake in a real hunting situation, I'd be all over that. I'd love a chance to do it. Would I be any good at it? Probably not. Down the three. There you go. Count of three. One, two, three. Fishing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Did I get it? Yeah. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> I, I, we actually I, did. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. We're, come on, where's the hug? Uh, we're hugging. Yeah. Now we're not hungry anymore. Yeah. Here we go, you guys. And now I take my club and finish him off. It looks like my beaver got away. Or did it? He's usually a little better than that, but the last one he went all the way down to back to Whitehorse. It was incredible. Thing just kept going. Ah! Hey, thanks, guys. Somebody get mine, please. Our friend in Six Nations had a wonderful and ingenious little setup there with the uh, with his little contraption, and we're trying to throw and, and make it go along the grass end or this little contraption he had. But it, nothing compares to having fresh snow and and have this thing sail for you know quarter kilometer and and uh, and have it go straight. 
Of course, I never enjoyed any of that, but I was watching a lot of other people do that. Down south, Floyd snakes are a work of art. The ones used up north in the games are a little less fancy, but they travel just as far. During the games, youth travel to the Yukon from as far away as Greenland, where they are equally passionate about snow snakes. Well, I practiced in the summer in an ingenious kind of setup, but these aren't called lawn snakes, although I think I'd be probably a lot better at it. Here's a chance for me to start practicing and learn some finer skills in these winter conditions. For this Coast Salish guy, who hasn't been around a lot of snow his whole life, this is a pretty tough challenge. But I'm gonna take this snow snake and make my people proud. Okay, I've got the support of the crowd, and uh, I have the support of my mental well-being. All right, just what Elias taught me. I think my snow snake has gone into hibernation on this one. Trying. <laughs> What's so funny? Why are you laughing? Why the hell's that? That sucked, okay? That wasn't my best throw. It wasn't a full release. I kind of pulled it. It's kind of like a Tiger Woods. I just give it a little slice anyway. <laughs> Next one, next one. Whoa. Dustin, I've been watching you throw, buddy, and it's actually quite impressive. I've been trying to emulate what you've done, but I can't seem to do it. What's your secret, buddy? Because I know, have you done this before? Uh, actually, no, I've, I've been doing dining games for a few years. I mean, I've learned some stuff, but uh, you just, just listen to the instructor. He told me just keep it balanced, and I guess I did. I, no. I was lucky first day. Well, some of those went all the way downtown. Yeah, they said it might be a record. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess it was lucky day. I guess right. I could be pretty good at it. He's, he's, he's good at it. And what do you think? Uh, is this something that you would uh, try to take on on a regular basis? Uh, actually, I would. Uh, yeah, in the winter, I'd, I'd, I'd hold on to this sport. It's a pretty good sport. Right on. Yeah. A snow snake lover. You've <laughs> discovered one here in the Yukon. Awesome. Look at that. He just released this guy's like 12, 13 years old. I feel defeated, but this is like a similar scene we've seen before, right? Stevie's a little down, he gets back in there, next thing you know, it's all the way downtown. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, Dave, I need a stick. Thanks, buddy. Any last minute advice for me here, Elias, uh, from the master? Um, you've been watching me, obviously. Yeah. Keep the spear tip up when you're throwing it. Uh -huh. So as soon as you let it go, make sure the spear tip doesn't dig into the ground. So keep it a little bit angled spear higher. Spear tip up. And throw it as low to the ground as you can. Low to the ground as possible. Got it. OK, here we go. At taking direction. Yeah, 25 feet. Uh, you know, I wasn't hitting too much in that area. Well, the advantage of not being able to throw so far is I don't have to walk so far to pick up the snow snake. Over a period of time, they would curve off, and it's a matter of my release, and I had a few go up to 150, but it was very far and few between. Patience is a virtue. I can hear what my grandfather told me. Take your time, grandson. It'll be okay. Ah! like spearing a, a fish in the Couchin River, back in the old days. <laughs> Stevie! Ah! So I've thrown it as far as I've ever thrown it. Now I have to run and get it. It's 
it's a great feeling, you know, it's an excellent feeling to see the young, those young, young guys and those young girls do that snow snake. Just to see how far they can go, you know, it gives them like more confidence that they can accomplish anything in their in their day to day life. It helps the younger men stay out of trouble, eh? And if they if they feel they want to learn how to play this game to keep it going, it's up to them. All they can say is it's there. If you want it, you, you, you keep it going. It's really important because you're trying to create community, so it's kind of like it's kind of like a competitive atmosphere, but in the sense that everybody's trying to help each other gain, so they're all trying to improve themselves. So it's kind of a nice atmosphere. Working with these kids, the youth up here in the Yukon has been fantastic. You know, they all embrace the sports in which they play. I mean, it's a way of life. I haven't seen too many kids here who look obese. I mean, it looks like they're out there, they're training, they're, they're in the outdoors, they're having fun. The Arctic way of life is very much alive and well here in the Yukon. And uh, to watch them grow and embrace the sports and show me how it's done, you can't ask for anything else. He had such a cute button nose. Still got whiskers on there. It's kind of like mine. Coast Salish guy with a Seneca hat on. I hope my mom's not watching. Oh no. Uh, he did it. Here's my chance. No. <laughs>